Namaste to all. In a previous video, which I made approximately three weeks back, I was explaining the steps of spiritual progress, how to progress spiritually in our life, as a part one. This is another part, or a, we can say continuation of that uh, video. And this video can also be seen separately. It is not continuation in the sense that only you can understand this video if you see that video, nothing like that. But if you, I recommend uh, you to see that video. I will put the link in the description of this video. So in the previous video, just to revise, I spoke about uh, some important points in the life, like you know, we must study Vedas every day. We must do the prescribed duties what is mentioned in the vedas like nitya karma sandhya upasana agni hotra and nished nished means whatever is not prescribed by almighty god that means we must not eat non vegetarian food we must not uh, hurt others all those karma also we must try to adopt in our life and then uh, we must dedicate all our actions to almighty god ishwar pranidhanani then uh, turn turning away the uh, mind from the desires of the world then uh, try to you know get out of the sins we have a tendency to do sins due to the rajaguna tamaguna etc so we must try to release ourselves from uh, various uh, temptations of sins then also understand to reflect upon the limitations of the sensual pleasures then uh, we must uh, strive extremely hard to be a mumukshu or a jigyasu to try to discover ourselves and then try to get sangati with, uh, with acharya to learn his knowledge and then try to be alone in the house sometime at least every day minimum one hour two hours whenever possible try to be alone and reflect upon yourself and then also try to cultivate the action of shamdam uparati titiksha etc which i explained in the last video and continuation further more qualities are extremely important in the spiritual progress the next one is Cultivate a steady devotion towards Almighty God. Of course, worship is one thing and devotion is another thing. Devotion means understanding the quality of Almighty God and try to have a devotion to that Almighty God. Try to be submissive to Almighty God. When you are submissive to Almighty God, you will not even misbehave with other people because you understand that God is omnipresent. You will understand that God is seeing you. You will not do any sins thinking that nobody is seeing me. So cultivate steady devotion and also it is linked to the Ishwara Pranidhanani. Whatever we do, we must try to have Ishwara Pranidhanani. That means give the results in the hands of Almighty God. Then give away desired prompted activities. You are living in an apartment. The next house is a close friend of yours. He has bought a new car. Immediately the desire inside you comes up that I want to buy a similar car or I want to buy a better car. He has bought a high phone. You must also have a desire to, you know, you will get a, a desire to buy another iPhone or a better phone. These are desire prompted activities. The friend in the college is married to a beautiful girl. Then you also think that I must also get a very beautiful girl as a house, as a partner. So these are, we must try to give away desire prompted activities in the uh, Vedic path. Then always try to have very close connection with Acharya and uh, Adi Shankaracharya beautifully says one thing. Pratidinam tat paduka sevyatam sa vidwan anu pas priyatam. Go to the Acharya, try to be close to the Acharya and try to ask him that can I serve your feet. Tat paduka sevyatam. Try to serve the feet of the Acharya means my Acharya always says that when I was doing Tapasya, I was so close to my Acharya that I get the opportunity to do the Seva, Charan Seva every day and at 11.45 in the night or 12 o'clock in the night, I do the Charan Seva and then after my Acharya sleep, I sleep and my Acharya gets up at 2.30, I used to get up at 2.15 before my Acharya and be ready to serve the Acharya again and unfortunately you are not so close to me because you, you are not Jigyasu, I was Jigyasu, so my Acharya called uh, me towards him. I could not call you because you are not Jigyasu. But this is one of the most important aspects in our life that whenever possible, you must try to do Charan Seva of the Acharya. He does not need it, you need it. 
because the more you do seva the more knowledgeable you will become the more submissive you will become the more intelligent and wise you will become so this is extremely important charan seva of acharya but don't force the acharya request him if he has good you know uh, thinking about you he will call you so definitely he will give the opportunity but we must always try to do that this is what adi shankara acharya also says beautifully in his one of his sutra and then when you are in touch with acharya try to ask him about after doing seva to him deva puja sangati karana dhaneshu after that only ask him can you please teach me about brahma brahma means para brahma almighty god brahma vidya ask him about the knowledge of brahman who is almighty god he will anyway explain to you but he will give you some special insights from the vedas and those special insights are not available in the books he will tell you after he understands that you are a eligible shishya this is extremely important and always try to listen the knowledge from such an acharya who is a real yogi who is not posing like a yogi like there are so many yogis in youtube they call themselves as yogi mystic different different type of names they have but they are not real yogis real yogis are those who are in 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 indulged in only ved ved vidya they don't teach anything else other than vedas because they are realized soul and they have realized only vedas and uh, some more important interesting points is always analyze the meaning like as today or two three days back i mentioned in one of the video shravan manan nididhyasan after listening the vedas from acharya try to do manana manan chintan after manan chintan you must do nididhyasan you must follow that in your life then you must also try to embrace the vision of the scriptures that means the scriptures here i mean the darshanas the philosophies the upanishads like uh, kata upanishad or um, mandukya or isha upanishad you must try to understand embrace them means you must try to understand the framework what is the condition in which the rishi is giving this knowledge this is extremely important then always avoid arguments do not argue with people and do not argue unreasonably do not ever think that you are only right what is right is almighty god what is right is acharya of vedas so when you have that knowledge within you do not try to prove that you are only right for example many people argue with me like uh, one brother commented to me a couple of days back sir i am seeing your zakir naik videos the comments written by so many people they are insulting you so much they are insulting your acharya even please don't get disheartened sir he was telling me a yeah, good point but i don't get disheartened and these people call me for arguments why should you go for argument the moment you have already understood this is the truth and that is false you don't need to argue ha if they are really genuinely interested you can answer them but try to avoid arguments because when you argue you will lose your focus on almighty god and the next one is follow the reasoning when you embrace the scriptures you must follow the reasoning in the scriptures and that reasoning is available with acharya so again coming back to contact with acharya is extremely important then every day meditate upon that one almighty god meditate upon the truth truth means why god creates this world what is the nature of the creation the nature of the creation itself is destruction that means the moment the creation happens everything gets slowly 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 starting to go back to its original shape so try to meditate upon this kind of truth and try to understand the nature of almighty god try to meditate upon almighty god every day and give away your pride give away your pride and never ever enter into arguments with your acharya or those person who are wise person my acharya always says never argue with your acharya because your acharya is a realized soul and you are not so if your acharya says something 
just accept it and do as per it you will definitely get the results for example shweta ketu he never argued with his acharya shweta ketu was told by his acharya go to jungle this is the amount of guy i am giving you the cows you must just make sure that you are protecting the cow and it is growing in population that's it that's your job he never argued no acharya i am not interested in cow i want vedas no acharya i am not interested in cow i want to do agnihotra no acharya i am not interested in cow i want diksha he never told these things he just listened to acharya did the same and he became samadhist yogi so when a wise person like acharya samadhist yogi tells something don't argue with him and then one important point my acharya maharishi dan saraswati has also mentioned in the book light of truth is extremely important that try to win over the disease of hunger hunger is a disease either try to satisfy the hunger with good food or try to overcome hunger by hard practice when you do hard tapasya and when you follow brahmacharya you can win over the hunger also and pratidinam bhiksha actually veda says about pratidinam bhiksha we cannot do bhiksha we are not in a position to do bhiksha but my acharya's life when i see my acharya is a engineer by profession my acharya was working in military indian military engineering services highly learned and he is a philosopher with one but he lived in bhiksha see he has lived a life of vedas he lived in bhiksha means he is always tell whenever i go to jungle with my acharya my acharya lives in jungle for 55 years or 60 years always he did bhiksha every day but when i go to my acharya i go for bhiksha to for, for me and my acharya so pratidinam bhiksha aushadam we must also try to eat the food as aushadi after doing bhiksha when you do bhiksha that means bhiksha is not cooked food acharyas will not buy take bhiksha cooked food they will buy they will take some rice they'll take some dal they'll take some milk they will come back they will have one stow my acharya's acharya had similar one one stow and one uh, utensil one spoon so they cook and then they eat that's it nothing no grand food no oily food this is bhiksha bhojan when you eat bhiksha bhojan then you also get close with your acharya close with your other disciples of acharya because everybody is eating the same food this is extremely important then swad swad means swad annam do give up always give up the tasty food don't crave for tastiness if it is tasty it's okay if it is not tasty also it's okay one beautiful story i think i tro- told in tamil some time back that uh, there was a seth is a malik is the is the owner of the firm super rich billionaire he was eating his uh, morning salad and it was extremely bitter every day he eat salad it was always tasty one day it was extremely bitter then he will ask his servant and ask him to eat you you eat this you have prepared the salad for me you eat this then the servant will eat as if it is so tasty so delicious then he will ask i am watching you is it not tasting bitter to you he will say yes swami it is bitter to me but i am still happy because you have given me every day good food one day you have given me bad food i am happy for that also so then this, the the rich man will realize almighty god has given me all the facilities every day one day he has given me bitter food i am hungry so give away the taste this is extremely important and uh, whatever is you are getting as per your vidhi as per your prarabdha try to be santosh santushyatam we must always gain santosha in our life if we are not satisfied with what we have we can never meditate upon almighty god then most important is sheeta oshanam when it is cold when it is hot when it is you know uh, profit loss gain pleasure pain misery whatever comes in life try to accept it with santosh with satisfaction if you are able to balance this titiksha if you are tough then you can meditate on almighty god otherwise you can never and uh, one more important point is don't engage in useless talking some people talk just like that even by for themselves they talk and sometimes you carefully notice when you talk for yourself 
and if you talk some bad words bad words means negative words that will immediately impact your vritti immediately you will become sad you are not sad but after you are talking you are sad sometimes so try to be extremely careful try to stay away from useless talk it's extremely important knowledge of all the acharyas in the sanatan dharma then also you don't need to you know really care for public sympathy or somebody will think bad about me so i will do it if i am not going to temple my friend will f- feel bad about me so i want to go to temple and worship uh, lord shiva no why you have to go try to overlook the sympathy of the public you don't have to gain anybody sympathy if you are walking the truth be polite be humble but be firm very very important have an attitude of how does it matter is it going to matter me after 3 years of the time the activity of what i am doing for the benefit of somebody okay let us smoke everybody is smoking you also think okay one day i let me smoke and drink it's a party is it going to affect your spiritual life 100% but how does it matter to try to understand after 3 years will he or she who is in the party will they will they think bad about me even if they think bad about me it's okay with me so how does it matter that attitude should come to you i'm just not advising to you it's all for me as well as i told my videos are mainly for me and if you get benefit it's good for you and stiram sukham asanam mayachay always says try to sit on a asan firmly every day practice increase the time from 15 minutes per day to 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour per day then this will help you to meditate upon almighty god and always try to concentrate on almighty god in a day try to like you are busy in the office busy in the business busy in doing household work busy in studies whenever you get break try to remember that almighty god it's extremely important and uh, last but not least most important thing is try to do like you know padanjali magarshi says in his yoga sutra before the dukh comes and attack you try to attack the dukh means try to do so much tapasya that the dukh dukh cannot come and attack you like i wrote one um, quote some time back before the death comes to you you conquer death or before death conquers you you conquer it so it's extremely important before that karma comes and impact me how do i do that by tapasya by everyday sadhana by acharya seva when you do acharya seva your dukh will slowly disappear and when the dukh comes and impacts you you will understand this is your own karma and god is supreme judge and you will have an ability to accept that dukh so this is very very important that by your tapasya you conquer sanchita karma and prarabdha karma and one more associated point is try to avoid creating new karmas new sins that means na karma lipyate nare when you do vedic shub karma you will not get into the trap of karma when you do not do vedic shub karma you will get into trap of karma so try not to create new sins extremely important then only our mind will get fixed in almighty god so these are some of the steps which i have noted down from my acharya pravachan from some youtube videos from arshi dhanan saraswati from my acharya books these are some of the most important spiritual tips for our life which will help in our spiritual progress there are many 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 other points also whenever i write down more i will come back to you i hope uh, this uh, short audio helped you thank you so much namaste om